There are lots of dangerous things you can do in your home and I've gone pretty close to the wire with this one. Today's video is a cautionary tale to prevent you making the same mistakes as I did recently and also to outline the steps that are involved if you want to find out if you've got asbestos in your house. For a long time I've suspected that I had asbestos in this old Victorian cottage that we've lived in since 2010. In the ceiling of my cellar, below the eaves of this garage, and most recently, last week when I started thinking about making this video, I reckon I've also got it here in the roof of the porch. But it was clearing out the garage to board the loft a few months ago that I really started to think about this as I had to lift down from the roof space a large sheet of this, which had obviously been used under the garage eaves back in the 1970s, and actually which is still in remarkably good condition, as I found when I re-roofed the garage last summer. I wanted to find out if this was asbestos because quite frankly if it wasn't I'd quite like to keep it to do some repair work down in the cellar where there are a couple of boards that were removed in the past. But also if it was asbestos I wanted to know because at the very least I've got this large sheet here which needs safely disposing of. Now I slightly put this into the back of my mind again but I was spurred into action when we had a uh, conversation about this on my discord forum where it was pointed out that you can buy testing kits online. So I bought this samples only kit from Amazon, not cheap admittedly at 40 quid but actually not bad when you consider that the samples that you're sending off are being professionally tested. I went for a samples only kit as I already had uh, PPE, although the kit that contains the PPE is only another 10 quid so quite frankly it's probably not a bad thing to go for. It arrived a few days later with instructions plus submission form, small bags for putting the samples into and a returns envelope. And the instructions leaflet also contains details on ordering additional PPE and sample guidance. Now the first thing you need to do is register the kit online because you get a reference number when you do that that you have to quote when you send the samples off for testing. Wearing the PPE I carefully snapped off a corner of this panel outside the garage and also a corner of a similar panel that I think was removed back in 2010 when I had some plumbing work done in the cellar. I then double bagged each, labelled them up and put them in the post. I sent the samples off on the 11th of April and received the results by email on the 17th. And the testing confirmed my worst fears that materials were indeed amosite or brown asbestos, one of the most hazardous types of asbestos. Asbestos, a naturally occurring mineral, became incredibly popular from the 1930s to 80s due to its insulating properties and the strength it added to building materials, leading to it being added to everything from thermal insulation, flooring, ceiling boards, artex, and the list goes on. The three types most commonly used in the UK were crocidolite or blue asbestos, amosite, brown asbestos, and finally chrysotile, white asbestos, although in their manufactured form they're all white in colour. And as Peter, a public health doctor, neatly summarised recently on my forum, the microscopic fibres can hang in the air and become inhaled and react to cause inflammation in the lung tissues, causing, often decades later, a form of cancer called mesothelioma. I believe chrysidolite and then amosite are the most hazardous because of the way their spikes can get lodged in the lung tissues and the chrysotile slightly less so because the fibres are curly and therefore can be breathed out more easily. Although the relative risks of each can also depend on how much was actually installed and again I thank Cheesecake on my forum for this vigil. Now they're safe enough if I left undisturbed but the problem is and you might have seen when I cracked off that corner for the sampling the fibres were clearly visible and so safe disposal of this board has now become a priority. And the worst part of this story, unfortunately, I drilled through the cellar ceiling boards back in April last year when I was installing cabling for our electrician to connect the EV charge point to our consumer unit. I wore a mask like this at the time, but what I can't remember is how long I wore the mask for during the cleanup operation of all that debris afterwards, given the dangers that those microscopic fibres cause when they're hanging in the air. And the whole saw kit, which I haven't used since, should have been given a much more comprehensive clean. Now my local tip does accept asbestos if it's been double bagged, but the problem I've got with that large sheet there is it would need to be cut in order to double bag and transport it to the site. And I don't really want to do that. I'm quite fearful about the future consequences of the drilling that I've done into asbestos and any other uh, asbestos activity that I've unwittingly done in the past. So my advice to you would be, unless you've got a low risk item like I did when I had a uh, chimney blow off in a storm that I was able to safely bag up wearing PPE and take to the tip, just don't attempt to remove it yourself. 
because unless you've got an HSC license or are fully trained to remove low risk asbestos containing materials, you should get a specialist to remove it. It's just not worth the risk to your health. It will be a massive job to remove the amosite from the garage eaves and it shouldn't be disturbed anytime soon so it poses a very low risk. The same goes for the porch. I'll need to get a specialist team in to remove the cellar boards before I can do some scheduled meter tail upgrades but I will seal those cut edges in the meantime. But the main point of today's video is to alert you to the dangers of asbestos. I wasn't sure whether that boarding in my cellar was asbestos when I drilled through it and I'm absolutely sure that had I known it was asbestos I wouldn't have been nearly as lax with the safety steps that I took before drilling. The other point I want to impress on you today is just how easy it is to get a material that you're worried about tested because by knowing it's asbestos you're not going to make mistakes I did which will keep you a lot safer. So that's it for today uh, next week hopefully I'll be back on the kitchen renovation so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, I'll link to the asbestos kit in the description below the video, which of course you can access by clicking on the appropriate links, the more button on your smartphone or on your PC. And as I always say, if you're new to my channel, it would mean so much to me to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here. And don't forget to click on the bell notification icon so you get notified of all my future uploads. Thanks for watching today and I'll see you next week.